Hey guys, Jake here, back again for the second installment of the MVP Flight Check video series. Today we're going to be looking at all of the MVP Axiom and Streamline mid-range discs. Uh, so we have nine discs that we're going to be looking at. Uh, if you haven't watched the first video, you can go ahead and check it out. Um, there I explain a little bit more about what I'm trying to do, you know, the parameters of this whole experiment, quote unquote. Um, and you can check out the putters. So in this one, we're going to kind of get right to it. We're going to start throwing some discs. I'm going to try to talk maybe a little less than last time, uh, throw a little bit more, and we'll see what these discs do. All right, guys. So we're going to start off on the more overstable end of the spectrum. Uh, there's sort of three overstable mids that MVP offers. So for Streamline, we have the Runway. Um, I used to have one of these and was throwing it kind of comparing it with a pyro to decide which one I liked. Um, so I have thrown one of these. It's probably been a year or more since I've thrown one. Uh, the pyro, which is my go-to favorite overstable mid. I throw this all the time. And then the deflector, which is the most overstable of the discs. I have not thrown one of these yet, but it is supposed to be absolute beef compared to all the other ones. So we're going to see how these three fly in comparison. So the second set of mid-ranges we're going to be looking at are the ones that I'm going to call the more neutral mid-ranges. Um, these are probably the more common ones that most people have heard of. We've got first up the Hex, a very straight mid that I throw a lot. Um, very nice. Uh, the Reactor, another disc that I throw occasionally, uh, not as much anymore, but a, maybe a bit more overstable than the Hex. And the Matrix, which is what I had originally started throwing before the Reactor came out, another very nice disc. Uh, I feel like it was pretty similar to the Reactor. I haven't thrown one of these in well over a year, so it'll be interesting to see kind of how they compare now. Um, so yeah, those three are our sort of, sort of neutral, stable discs. Okay, guys, and our last set of discs that we're going to be looking at is sort of the understable discs. Um, so what we've got is a... Streamline Echo, an MVP Uplink, and an Axiom Paradox. Uh, I've thrown all three of these. I throw the Paradox and the Uplink a lot. Uh, the Echo, I threw the Circuit Challenge one, which I believe was technically Neutron. It looked like Cosmic Neutron. Um, but this is a brand new, just came out, just arrived yesterday, uh, Streamline Neutron Echo. From the stock release so we'll see if it flies like the other one did that i threw um but yeah we'll we'll give these a whirl and see how understable they actually are all right we're going to start things off with the overstable disc we're going to throw them out we're at, sitting at about 300 feet from the basket down here by the tree um that's a long ways i would say for me to throw an overstable mid uh on a flex line that's that's probably realistic uh, but I'm really just going to swing these out a bit to the right and see how much they they fade back towards the center. I'm going to try to throw them flat and hard. Uh, we will start with the pyro, I think. Uh, I believe, sorry about the shaking. I believe that this is probably going to be our least overstable of the three, uh, but we'll find out. This is in proton plastic. little high and a not quite flat but yeah just no worries about that thing turning over at all just sort of cruised in just like you expect for something overstable uh next up got the runway this one i remember being a little more overstable than the pyro uh we'll see we'll see what happens Got that one out a little bit more flat, a little bit more right. Uh, when we throw these again, maybe they'll be a little bit more similar. Um, that did seem like it had a little bit more stability at the very end. It seemed to hook up a bit harder, but it also, uh, I don't know, they weren't real similar throws. I threw the one kind of high and that one nice and low. So last up, we've got the deflector. Try the deflector here.
It's actually not as overstable as I expected from what I've heard from all the people online. Uh, all three of those felt, you know, fairly in the same range of stability. Uh, but we'll throw them again. We'll see if uh, maybe that was just the first throws of the day, knocking off some rust. All right, guys, round two with the overstable mid ranges. Again, we're going to throw them flat and hard. Hopefully, we can throw this pyro more straight at it, a little lower this time, like the other two. Uh, we'll compare. Uh, the first round, they all landed fairly uh, similar distance and everything. So, go ahead and just hit these flat again, see what happens. Again, I feel like that came out on a touch of hyzer, but it was at least lower. Uh, it definitely had some beef to it. Do the runway next. Uh, it felt pretty similar. If not, it maybe even held a little bit straighter. I'm not sure. And last, we've got the deflector. Let's see what this guy does. A little high, but definitely dumped hard at the end. Um, yeah, uh, honestly, between those three, I think I could get away with throwing any one of them and feel pretty comfortable. The thing I've always loved about the pyro is how much ground play it has. I don't remember the runway having quite so much, and I don't know if the deflector will. Uh, this grass is all pretty long and wet, so we're not going to be able to see it today. Um, but yeah, they're all great overstable mids so far. We'll maybe throw them on some flex lines or some forehands after this to get a, another sort of view of them. All right, next, let's throw these uh, neutral, neutral quote unquote mids, uh, and see how straight they are. We'll start with the hex. This should be the least overstable. Gonna throw these just flat and straight at it, more or less. It's the lightest touch of hyzer on that, and it held it the whole way. Um, but yeah, fairly neutral. Next up, we'll throw the reactor. This one I would expect to have a little bit more uh, fade at the end. Yeah, actually fairly, uh, fairly straight flight with just a touch more finish. Uh, and the Matrix, this one should be very similar to the reactor. It's got maybe a slightly different hand feel, but uh, numbers wise and flight wise, I remember these being very similar. Threw that one out right a little bit, but it did have a very similar flight to the reactor. Uh, yeah, we'll see, see if I can get those a little bit more consistent on my next round of throws. So we'll get those and bring them back in a minute. All right, round two with the stable mid-ranges. Um, I don't think there was anything too surprising after the first round when I walked up there. Um, I did actually expect the hex to go a little further. I don't know if I didn't get a, a hold of it quite so much or if it's spring and I still can't throw yet. But uh, we're going to go ahead and wing them again nice and hard and flat. See what happens. Hex first. Yeah, good distance behind the tree back there. Uh, didn't really turn. I kind of threw it off to the right and it sort of stayed out there. Um, yeah, just a long straight flying disc. Next up, we will take the reactor. A little low, but a very straight flight out of that one. Um, 
it did feel like it was starting to come back a little more at the end than the, the hex, but nothing crazy, like maybe a half of fade. You know, if, if the hex is a, a 0.5, then I'd give the reactor a 1 there. Um, I know if you get the, uh, the glow plastic, the Eclipse plastic, it gets a bit more overstable, at least the older runs. I don't know if they're fixing it in the new ones, but um, as far as the Neutron ones, they're pretty straight. All right, last up, we've got the Matrix. Threw that one a little high. But in general, flew about the same as last time. Just a nice straight pushing disc that just, you know, has a good consistent fade at the end. Very similar to the reactor. You could probably throw those interchangeably. Um, I actually kind of like the feel of the Matrix a little more in the hand now. I, I used to feel the opposite way. Now I kind of like the Matrix. I don't know. I could see using either one. I, I think when I do use a reactor, I use the more overstable glow ones anyway, so it's not really relevant because they don't have an overstable Matrix. But uh, if I were just throwing the, the Neutron reactor, I might switch it up for the Matrix. We'd see. But we're going to take those and probably throw them on some hyzers or maybe some other shots here and just see what uh how they react in some different conditions all right so now let's throw these understable discs we're gonna go ahead and start with uh, we'll go flippies first we'll go with the paradox here this one should definitely turn over Oop, almost throwing it uh, i'm gonna go ahead and throw it out to the left side flat and see if it comes back to the right without rolling Not too bad. It's pretty fresh still, so it should uh, should have maybe hair more stability. So that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it was it's definitely coming back to the right. Very understable. Nice disc. Next up, the uplink. This one should be a touch less understable, so I can probably throw it a little bit uh, more straight at it and not worry about it rolling over. Yeah, just a gentle left to right. Nailed the tree. All right, and last up, the Echo. The Echo's numbers claim that it will be maybe a, about the same as the uplink. Um, I remember it being a lot closer to a hex when I threw it at the circuit challenge, but we'll see what these, this new stock run is like. Again, I'm going to throw it kind of straight at it and see if it uh, turns at all. No turn, dead straight, lots of great glide. That was very, uh, very hex-like flight. So I think that the new stock run is pretty similar to what I saw before. And I would actually classify that as a neutral, not an understable disc. All right, we're going to go grab those and throw them again and see if we get the same flights. All right, we're back to the understable discs. We're going to start with the Paradox. Uh, we saw last time that it turned over pretty... Pretty hard, so I'm going to throw this one again out to the left, maybe give it a little more height so that it has time to flex out and, uh, you know, maybe not turn into a cut roller, get a little bit more distance. We'll see. Yeah, that is just a very understable disc. Next up, the uplink. Throw this one just a hair off to the left. Nice turn out of it that time. It's a very nice understable disc. That one's a lot more workable in my opinion for backhands, long backhands. All right, last up the Echo. This one probably should be getting thrown with the other group, the neutral ones, but we'll throw it again, see if it turns. It's got a one and a half turn, supposedly, so throw it straight at it. Ooh. 
whew, almost aced that one. Uh, no turn again. It was just very, very straight. That one is, it's almost like a longer hex, like a glidier hex. Kind of crazy. It feels pretty nice in the hand. If I didn't already throw a hex, I could easily see switching to the Echo. It's a much cheaper disc uh, because it's not the um, overmolded disc, and it flies very similarly. So I mean, you just have to see how they beat in long term, but um, yeah, very nice. So we'll get those. We'll maybe throw them on some hyzer flips and stuff next. All right, we're back to the overstable discs, and before we move up for some forehands, I kind of want to try some big anti flexes to see how well these guys fight out. Maybe we'll see a more noticeable difference there. So we're going to start with the pyro. Just going to throw a big ante sort of straight at the basket because I imagine they'll flex out pretty fast. Oh yeah, that flexed over pretty good. Next we've got the runway. Same shot. That one felt like it started to flex out faster, but they kind of slowed down. Ended up being about the same result. And last, the deflector. See what happens here. I feel like I threw that one a little higher, but it definitely also felt like it flexed out almost immediately. Uh, they're all three of them are very beefy. I think the pyro is the most controllable still, um, but I could probably get get by throwing any one of those three and be pretty happy. So, all right, next next year we're gonna throw our uh, stable mids again. Uh, this time I think we're gonna throw them on a little flex just to see if they will hold the line or if they'll come out. Uh, so we're going to start with the hex. I'm going to throw it on a slight flex, uh, more or less straight at it, maybe a hair to the left of the basket. Find out what happens. Maybe a bit more uh, ante than I intended to put on that guy, uh, but it definitely held it all the way to the ground. Next, we'll try it with the reactor. Yeah, that one does a much better job of just panning to flat, just landed nice and soft. So yeah, I would definitely have no problems flexing the, the reactor. Uh, next up, the matrix. I imagine this will do about the same. Again, just a nice pan out there. Pretty much to flat. Uh, actually came a little bit past flat, but yeah, pretty much the same flight. Um, yeah, there you have it. A little bit of extra stability on the matrix in the reactor, as the numbers would suggest. All right, back to our understable discs here. This time I'm going to throw them on a bit of a hyzer and try to get them to flip up. Um, the Paradox will definitely flip up. This one might flip all the way up and over. We'll see. Uh, but I'm going to throw it on a hyzer flip basically directly at the basket. Man, even with all that extra height it got, it very much flipped all the way over and kept carrying way right. Uh, that is just a very understable disc. Uh, I don't usually throw those full power, you know, at a range like this, so um, I do bag a Paradox, but it's usually a trouble disc for me, like a scrambling disc, because I can do little, like, forehand flicks or, you know, wrist flicks out of the woods, and it'll stay either dead straight or just have a nice little turn, so uh, I don't know that I would ever use it as a mid-range. I use it more like a putter, but um, if you don't have a lot of arm power, that's a great disc. Um, okay, uplink. This time, hopefully we'll get more of a, a straight hyzer flip. Down a little low, carried up and all the way over. Um, 
it's unfortunate because I know that disc flies that that particular uh, shot very well. But uh, yeah, I gave it enough juice that it flipped all the way up and over, so it's it's definitely understable. All right, last up the Echo. I don't know if I'll get any flip out of this, but we're gonna try it anyway. Put on a slight hyzer and see if we can get to stand up. Yeah, it it kind of got up to flat, almost up to flat. Very nice. Uh, that's about what I'd expect from a hex as well. So, um, yeah, it's sort of the gyroless hex if you if you want to compare it to something. Very nice disc. I actually really like that Echo, and I could definitely see bagging it if I didn't already have so many mids already in the bag. Um, yeah, very cool. We're actually going to move it up now, try some forehands. Uh, see see what happens there. All right, guys, now we're going to throw ourselves some forehands, uh, hopefully. And as you can probably remember from all my other videos, I'm not really a forehand guy, so don't expect a whole lot here. But we're, we're at about 230 feet, I think it said, this new uh, T area to the basket. I'm just going to throw these flat and see if they'll fade back in towards the basket. Uh, pyro first. Nice straight with a, a predictable fade at the end there. I threw that a little straighter at the basket than I intended, but uh, still seemed to fly pretty well. Street, uh, the streamline runway next. This one feels a little less comfortable for me in the hand. I feel like it's a little deeper or something. Or maybe it's just the way the, the rim. I don't know. Something about just not as comfortable, but see how it flies. Another very nice flight, very similar straight with predictable fade. All right, last up, we got the deflector. This one feels, I don't know, probably somewhere between those two or maybe leaning towards the, the runway feel. I'm not sure. It's, it's not bad at all. I could easily throw it. All right, we'll try it again. Yeah, that one feels like it does have a little bit more beef on the forehand. Came out a little faster. Um, so yeah, there's there's maybe a bit more fade on the deflector. Interesting. Okay, guys, let's try some forehands with our neutral mids, starting with the hex. Uh, I'm going to throw these more or less straight at the basket. Uh, I expect they're going to turn a little bit. Um, but we'll see. Maybe they'll hold up with the stability. Yeah, a little turn, but it faded back. Next up, we'll try the reactor. This one should have a little bit more uh, torque resistance, I imagine. That one did not have a good release, kind of came out fluttery. Um, but the extra torque resistance kind of made it fly more or less like the hex. So uh, it does mask a little bit of your, your error. Uh, next up, we'll throw the matrix. Kind of like the feel of this one for the forehand. Uh, it just sits nicely. Yeah, that one, I, it was not the greatest release. It was a little better than the last one, but all three of those pretty pretty much flew the same way. I felt like the Hex had the nicest release, but had the most turn and the least fade. Um, but the end result was the same on all three. I think if you had a good, clean release, all three of those would be very nice. The Hex would have that nice turn, uh, and you could rely on the resistor or the reactor and the matrix to just sort of fly dead straight. And hook up at the end for you, at least at this range. All right, guys, let's try some forehands with our understable disc. This could be a disaster. <laughs> uh, we're starting with the paradox. Um, this one, I'm going to have to put a ton of hyzer on, and it's probably still going to stand all the way up and continue left, um, especially if I get a poor release. 
Um, I do forehand these out of the woods occasionally, but definitely not with much power. So we'll see what happens here. Yep, all the way up and over. It does forehand well, it just can't not turn, right? So <laughs> uh, it's, I think it's better inside of 200 feet than it is at this range, unless you were really trying to get left. Uh, you can do some really wild and crazy shots going out this way and coming back around, but um, yeah, just it's not the disc for me at this range for sure. Uh, next up, the upling. This one I expect to flip up pretty good and probably over a little bit as well, um, unless I put a whole lot of hyzer on it. So we'll put a decent amount and see if I can get it to flat. Not the greatest release, and it did go all the way over. I have a hard time, hard time forehanding the uplink just because of the shape. It doesn't fit as well in my hand. Um, but I also don't really forehand an understable mid all that often, other than the Paradox. And like I said, I'm using it more like a putter at that point. So um, I guess if you have the touch, go for it. Uh, last up, the Echo. This one should probably fly pretty similar to the Hex. So... I'm more or less going to throw the babiest of hyzers and see if it'll flip up to flat and ride kind of straight. Yeah, very nice. Just add a touch of hyzer and it flies perfectly. That disc is fantastic. If you don't have one, I highly recommend checking one out. Um, I'm a big Hex fan, but that echo is very, very, very similar. So uh, also probably like six bucks cheaper. So um, yeah, definitely worth checking that one out. Hey guys, so we kind of lost the audio in those last, in the last few recordings. So I'm just gonna do some voiceovers for these. Uh, so the next <clears throat> test we're gonna do is we're gonna throw some flex overhand shots uh, just to see how the discs pan out. Um, it's just a, a really useful shot when you're scrambling. So we're going to start with the pyro here. And it really flexed out faster than I expected. Um, I do use that disc pretty often for that kind of shot. I, I wonder if I just didn't get quite as much snap on it. Um, but yeah, it definitely flexed out. You don't have to worry about it uh, holding all the way to the ground. Next, we're going to do the runway here. The runway seemed like it held a lot better. And again, I don't know if I gave it a little bit more snap or if that was just uh, the disc, but it, uh, it really did pan nicely. Last, we have the deflector. This one I expect will flex really hard. Threw it very high, very anti, pretty hard, and it still came all the way back and hyzered out. So uh, yeah, that's definitely a beefy disc. Um, all very good for those shots. All right, so for these next shots, I'm going to throw the neutral mids, and I'm going to simulate throwing a low ceiling shot, because at this range, I probably wouldn't throw a mid normally, unless I'm trying to scoot under a low ceiling, maybe get some ground play. Um, obviously, no ground play today, but uh, pretty much just throwing a low driving straight mid-range shot with these guys. So it's going to start uh, with the hex and see what happens. Just a nice straight, held it all the way to the ground. Very nice. Just glad to see it didn't fade out much. The, the reactor here, uh, this one I would expect to have a little bit more fade. And it did kind of hook up. It was pretty close to the hex, actually, at, the, at that range. And that throwing it that low, it doesn't have that much time to fade. Um, now the matrix, I expect to be, again, very similar to the reactor. Yeah, and that one, I completely threw it up in the air, so I would have smacked the ceiling. But uh, in general, flew fairly similar to the reactor. Had that little bit of, of fade, so... Yeah, I, I would probably choose the hex of those three for that shot. 
All right, so for these understable discs, uh, what I'm going to be testing at this 230 foot mark is powering down on the mids. Uh, so sometimes if you need to hit a gap, throwing a, a mid range, an understable mid range at lower power, you can get a nice straight flight or maybe just a hair of turn compared to the, the more exaggerated turn you'd get throwing full power. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the paradox and see how this works. Nice gentle turn, uh, much better than we saw at uh, the, the longer range where it just flipped and tried to cut roll, so it's, it's great for those shots. Next up we'll throw the uplink. This one uh, should be pretty straight. I usually throw this uh, and have done this shot many times. <laughs> sure enough, just very straight, glidey beautiful power down shot and last is the echo yeah that one it did come out on a tiny bit of hyzer but just that disc is a bit more beefy it's more of a neutral mid so it it just tends to to hyzer out and it flies a lot more like a reactor at that distance i guess so uh, yeah all good discs i enjoyed them all uh, but for power down shots paradox and uplink definitely win all right guys next we're going to throw the overstable mid ranges on some hyzer lines um, starting things off with the pyro I'm just going to throw them out off to the right um, just spike them back in towards the basket and make sure they don't flip up Pyro holds the line all the way to the ground, uh, nicely fighting and not flipping up. Next up is the runway. Threw that one a little bit higher spike, same thing. That one seemed like it wanted to fight a little bit harder to the ground. Uh, you can tell it had a little bit of fade. And then the deflector. This one might actually lawn dart. Uh, seemed a bit more overstable so we'll see if it holds the same line or fades a bit oh uh, yeah it definitely spiked a little harder not insanely more overstable but definitely more overstable all right now we'll throw the neutral mid ranges on a sort of the same spike hyzery lines hoping that these guys don't flip up or won't flip up too much uh, you might throw this kind of shot if there's no headwind. So here's the hex. Maybe the tiniest bit of flip up, but mostly stayed on the line that we threw. Um, this is at 250 feet, I should add, um, just for some reference. Next up, we've got the reactor. This one I would expect to be a little bit more like our overstable ones and should fight a little bit towards the ground. Yep, no flip at all, really just holds the line perfectly. And last up, we're going to have the, the matrix here. This should be very similar to the reactor. Yep, once again, just a nice, doesn't try to flip up, doesn't really fade any harder really just kind of holds that line right to the ground and last we're going to throw some spike hyzers with our understable discs uh, this could be interesting the paradox i do not expect will work very well it should flip completely up and maybe even over even giving it spike hyzer height it's probably still going to flip up and just sort of ride straight and then fall out of the air so we'll see what happens It definitely flips up to flat and just sort of keeps pushing straight and drops down. Not a great choice for throwing spike hyzers, uh, but it was good to see how much uh, understability it has there. Uh, next, the uplink. I'd kind of expect this one to flip up and ride a bit more left. Um, yeah, it's it can be nice to get a little bit further around a corner or something like that if you need to come in a little bit softer. 
Let's do that one a little higher, but yeah, just a gentle little bit of flip up, just enough to get it to glide a bit more left. I caught a tree before it could land, but um, got good distance out of it anyway. And last up, we'll have the Echo. The Echo, I expect this to fly similar to the Hex and just sort of hold the line, maybe a tiny flip up and maybe you know cruise a little further left but uh, shouldn't be anything too crazy yeah no real flip just sort of holding I uh, did catch a tree on that one too um, but yeah very similar to the hex line all right guys that was the mid ranges uh, just some closing thoughts on these guys so starting with the overstable mids Honestly, I think you could bag any one of these and get very similar uh, use out of them. They're all pretty close. Uh, the deflector did end up being a, a bit more overstable. And the pyro, I think, was probably the one that I could uh, get to go straightest the longest. So I think that their numbers sort of make sense. Uh, I think I'll still enjoy the pyro a bit more just because I can get a little bit more distance out of it. And I do know that it does great skip shots. Um, be interesting to try these all again when the ground wasn't so nasty and uh, maybe have a little bit better luck skipping but uh, honestly all three of them are great uh, if you're looking for an overstable mid you can't go wrong with any one of these guys uh, if we look at the stable mids the reactor and the matrix uh, no real surprise there that they're basically identical for me uh, just a nice if you need something with a little bit more finish you know, very straight disc that just always is going to hook up a little bit left at the end. Both of these work great. I, the one surprise that came out of it is that I, when I originally switched to the reactor, it's because I loved the hand feel so much more. And now I almost feel like I like the Matrix one more. So that's kind of an odd switch. But I really like both these discs. They both fly very similarly, like I said. So you can't go wrong if you like one or the other. Um, and then the Hex... I've done an entire re review on the Hex and absolutely love this disc. It's so straight and it's so far flying. Um, hard to go wrong. I mean, it's one of the most popular discs that they make now. Uh, just a really, really good straight mid. As far as the understable discs go, uh, the biggest surprise of the entire thing was the new Echo. Um, I really enjoyed throwing this disc. I didn't love it at the Circuit Challenge. Uh, I think mainly because I was expecting it to be more understable. Uh, I swear the numbers used to be 5-5-2 five, five, or something like that. Because I remember thinking this is going to be slot between the uplink and the hex and it'll be great because I wanted something with a little more stability than an uplink. Um, but then it ended up flying almost identical to the hex. Uh, but now throwing them side by side, this one does seem to have a tad less stability than the hex. Um, it, I think the numbers are off by 0.5, and I guess I could buy that. Um, and this, you know, it's brand new. It should beat in, and without the gyro, maybe that'll make it a little bit more understable. I don't know. Um, but it just, it was really glidey. It flew very nicely backhand, forehand. Really liked it. Um, I could definitely see myself bagging this uh, if I ever get off the hex train. Um, yeah, just really, really enjoyed this, and I can't recommend it enough. Um, the Paradox, I've done a big review on this. I love this disc and have one in my bag all the time, but it is for very niche, uh, sort of shots. It's, it's an interesting, interesting disc. So it's not for everybody. And if you, if you have a lot of power, it is very touchy and very situational. Um, but if you're a low power thrower, I highly recommend checking this out. This might be your, your perfect turnover disc, or maybe even just your straight disc. Um, Really love the Paradox, even though I can't necessarily say everybody should have it in their bag. If you don't have room, it's kind of like the Glitch, where it's such a good disc for those shots that they do something nobody else can. But, you know, if you don't have space for it, it is it is probably not going to see the same amount of use as something that's you know a, a work, workhorse driver or something, right? Maybe, maybe that's a little more important. But if you have space, highly recommend having one of these guys. And the uplink, I love this disc. It's 
This and the Mako 3, I go back and forth. I like them both. Um, but this one has a little bit more turn, I feel, and a little bit more distance potential, a lot of glide. Uh, whereas the Mako 3 is a little straighter and just kind of doesn't seem to want to. It just kind of wants to get to the ground, it feels like. Um, so yeah, the, this has been just such a great, great turnover disc for me. Um, and like we saw in the video, the shorter range, softer throws where it just goes dead straight is really, really nice in the woods. So um, yeah, it was good to see it out there side by side with the rest of these today. Uh, another great disc. Uh, with the mid ranges, I obviously throw a lot of these already. So there weren't too many big surprises, but it was still a lot of fun. And it was great to throw that echo. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next one here that we're going to do on fairways. Uh, there's some more new and interesting discs that I uh, haven't either thrown in a while or I haven't thrown at all. For instance, the, the uh, Trance, I have I bought that from the OTP, OTB drop and have yet to throw it yet. So I'm excited to get out there and throw it. And hopefully I'll be able to get out sooner this time now that the weather is getting a little nicer. There's a bad patch of... Uh, real bad patch of weather there for a while where it was either freezing cold or windy or rainy. And now I'm hoping we'll get some stretches where I can get out and get some more film. So hopefully they'll come on a little faster. Uh, if you have any comments about the mid ranges, what your favorite mid range is, things that you'd like to see in the future, be sure to drop a comment below. Subscribe if you want to catch the rest of this series uh, when it comes out. Uh, otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one.